Hey guys, what's up? You all am on McLean for life once again, and I wanna welcome everyone back to another vs Snipes movie review. And today I'm going to review and talk about is of course um, 1996 The Fan, which came out, which was released on August 16, and of course this is a psychological thriller based on a novel by Peter Abrams, 1995, and was released on August 16, 1996, um, which uh, is just based on a book. And <clears throat> the movie talks about um, Guido Renard played, I forgot to mention, um, uh, the fan stars Wesley Snipes and Robert De Niro. And um, the movie talks about uh, Gil Renard, he's a hunting knife, salesman, and obsessive, uh, obsessive fan of um, uh, San Francisco baseball team Giants. And his favorite um, baseball player is, Ra uh, is Bobby Rainborn, played by uh, Wes Snipes. And, um, and he's a deranged, uh, Gil Renard is a deranged character. Um, he's uh, he's very obsessive with Bobby and obsessive fan of uh, his baseball team. And by the finale, we find out that he also was um, that he also wa was uh, himself a baseball team player um, in uh, the the small minor league where, as a child. And he was a huge fan of a baseball, and he loved the he he loved the game. His favorite. Uh, his favorite baseball team was always San Francisco Giants. Um, Wes Snipes plays Bobby Rainborn. He's a baseball player, and he and um, and he signs a, a contract, forty million dollars. And of course, um, <clears throat> while his lucky numbers are, are actually in the T-shirt, are actually number eleven, but instead he gets number is thirty three. While his um, co-star Juan Primo, played by Benicio del Toro, gets the number and he starts overshadowing Bobby Rainbow and he makes him difficult because um, Bobby, you know, he can't um, because Bobby he, uh, he because he's falling out behind Primo and Primo overshadows him, you know, in the small league way. And uh, yeah, so. Um, <clears throat> So, um, Gil Renard, you know, he actually has uh, very difficult in the job um, because he tries to sell, um, he's, uh, he's selling the knife by customers and uh, there's, this, uh, there's this guy um, <clears throat> who's an asshole, he goes, you know, tries to sell him a knife, the guy talks about kayaks and uh, and uh, of course, you know, Gil gets angry and he says, you know, so wait, so... I am trying to, I'm talking about knives, I mean, what the fuck Kaius has with knives, you know, I'm trying to sell you knives, and he says, you know, why should you stick your kayaks in up in your ass, you know, you moron, <laughs> and the guy complains about it, and because, um, <clears throat> because Gil, you know, he doesn't go up, you know, or because his um, employment, employer does not, um, tolerate his behavior, he gets him fired, he loses his job, and finds out that Gil has um, a son, and um, his, uh, he goes to his ex-wife, she has a new boyfriend, you know, Chris Mulkey, he was also on First Blood, plays Tim, uh, the new boyfriend of Ellen, um, and, uh, and of course, and of course, um, Gil takes his son to, to the baseball game, um, but he also has to catch this client, you know, this important client, he has to catch this important client, so um, so uh, he has a meeting. Uh, Two thirty, he has to be in this office uh, while he takes his son to uh, the baseball game. And you know, there's this bitch, this old bitch. She keeps staring and uh, looking like like a fucking uh, like a fucking stalker. She keeps looking and watching. You know, um, Gail, what he does. And, uh, and of course, Gil, you know, he has no choice. He, he has to catch in this important client in order to save his job. 
So he uh, he runs, you know, from the stadium to to this uh, to this important office. He few minutes he's late. He finds out that the, that his important client is in the baseball game. He goes back to the baseball game and finds out that his son's missing. He goes home and turns out this old bitch, you know, she read him out. She uh, um, she read him out. She takes his son home, you know, and uh, and Ellen doesn't want to let him uh, uh, buy, you know, the house. So Gil um, breaks uh, breaks in in the house. He goes and tries to find um, this old lady. Uh, he tries to find his son. He locks himself in the sun. He says, "Go ahead, call the cops." And Tim and Ellen are calling the cops. So and also making a, re a restricting order because he violated, you know, he violated the the deal and the rights to his son. And um, Gil is so deranged character, and he's so obsessed with with the baseball game and with uh, with Bobby, you know, with Bobby Rainbow because his favorite uh, player, and that he doesn't even know what uh, what his son likes, and his son doesn't like the pizza. He brings in the mushrooms. Um, and it's just, uh, it's just, you know, his behavior just gets uh, still uh, more deranged because, you know, he's now, um, he loses his family, his son, um, he, <clears throat> his, um, uh, his job. And uh, meantime, there's more rival rivalry between Bobby and um, Primo because Primo overshadows um, Bobby Rainborn and and um, while um, Gil he's in this bar, he sees you know for the first time Bobby tries to talk to him, but Bobby doesn't ignore him. He goes with uh, with Primo in the bathroom. They have an argument. You know Bobby goes to punch him because he doesn't want to give him the numbers because he needs the numbers. You know on the T-shirt he needs the number. The T-shirt he punches him. There's an argument and of course um, you know and of course. Um, <clears throat> Um, uh, Gil sees that, you know, he hears and sees that, so somehow he, uh, so later Gil, you know, he gets dressed as a, as a, as one of the, on the report, uh, one of the journalists uh, from the press, and he goes to this team, you know, he meets, um, Primo, and there's this song, you know, from, um, this is this song from, um, <clears throat> um, um, uh, nine Inch Nails, which is uh, closer, and I don't know what what is in the song. You know, I don't know, fuck you, everyone, I'll fuck you. It's like what Robert De Niro wants to fuck <laughs> when it's a Del Toro in the movie. I don't know why was that song was unappropriate. I like the song, but it's unappropriate. Or when uh, you know when he uh, chases uh, um, when he uh, when he chases Bobby Sun, you know, in the film. Um, that that's the song Nine Inch. Uh, um, by um there's actually this song um by uh nine this song by uh um <clears throat> nine um By nine inch nails closer, you know this is a song. By nine inch closer, they actually mean, they actually put this song, you know, when, uh, a few times in the film. Um, but yeah, it's uh, so I don't know why why was that song in the film, you know, when he, when uh, Robert De Niro goes walks into the steam, you know, and uh, and it's like I wanna fuck, I wanna feel you, I wanna feel you, I wanna need. I wanna feel you, I wanna fuck you. What Robert De Niro wants to fuck Primo wants to fuck everyone in this movie. I don't know why it was it was kinda unappropriate, but I like that song. But he goes in the steam and he fights off with Primo steps with a knife in the leg, you know, and uh, Primo dies then. Um and uh, he goes, I think he cuts the numbers when Primo has the has the dude on on the uh, on the shoulder, you know, he goes and cuts him out. Of course, that scene it wasn't in the film. Um, then he goes and um, and now because Primo dies, you know, now every every of the teammates by Bobby Raymond wears his lucky numbers, number eleven, and uh, now everyone like mourns about it. Um, when uh, when Primo, you know, now everyone mourns about it when Primo dies, but um, but. Uh, um, Gil says, "Let's go play games," and uh, Bobby decides to be better. So he so he starts making scores. He gets better. Um, he starts getting better, 
but uh, um, Gil's behavior gets more aggressive, more more deranged, and uh, he starts uh, um, he starts talking and watching with uh, with, with uh, um, he starts stalking and watching, you know, from the distance, Bobby and his son. And Bobby's son, Sean, you know, um, there's also a scene when, um, uh, when Bobby uh, goes and he uh, meets, you know, this uh, kid on, on a, on a, in the hospital who's also named Sean and he's dying. And he prom promised him to give a home run. He dies, but the kid dies, which is sad. Um, and, uh, of course... Of course, you know, um, his son is also named Sean. And Sean goes in the water and almost drowns by surfing. And I love the scene when um, Gil runs, you know, in the water and saves Sean. He saves him. I love that scene. Um, he saves him. So he becomes uh, friends with Bo with Bobby. And he also steals the, uh, the, the, the dress, the t-shirt, you know. Uh, he steals, you know, the t-shirt from Bobby. Um, his uniform, his uh, baseball uniform, he steals it. Um, they they actually uh, throw a few balls, you know. And that time when um, they they have a conversation and um, and Bobby says that he doesn't care, you know. And to him, uh, it's important. The game is important. And when he says he doesn't care, you know, that uh, even upset and makes uh, and triggers, you know, um, very anger uh, issue in. Um, very anger issue uh, in Robert De Niro and um, and that time you know Robert De Niro goes and kidnaps his son also he steals his car his dog and he goes to his friend um, Coop I think it was um, uh, it was some different actor but he goes to in which they both play together um, he kidnaps his son but when Coop finds out, you know, that he kidnapped Bobby's son, that it's not his son, he tries to help him out. And, you know, that time Gil goes and kills the guy, you know, with a baseball bat, you know, he goes and beats him with a baseball bat. And um, then, of course, um, he chases with the car um, Sean, but he catches him. Um, and, of course, when... Uh, when Bobby finds out, call, he calls Gil, you know, Gil tells him that he wants a home run. He has to do a home run, and then he has to tell 5,000 million viewers that he, that, that this is for his number one fan. That's what, uh, the, that's what Gil wants, you know, because it cares, because it matters. The game is important, it matters, you know, uh, it cares, and Gil cares. You know, and uh, of course, um, by the game, you know, there's a raining uh, uh, when um, when Bobby is now in the game. There's a raining. You know, they actually, you know, the San Francisco Giants versus um, versus San Diego um, was um, um, <clears throat> versus San Diego Pedro Pedres. You know, they actually uh, they actually. Um, they're actually playing against uh, San uh, San Diego Padres, and um, there's a raining, there's a storm, there's a raining, and uh, uh, and of course the upper, you know, the um, the referee is actually going to cancel the game, and uh, they can't do that because Bobby needs a home run. He needs a home run. So when they actually uh, when they actually break the game, you know, and of course uh, Jules Stern, uh, she's a radio ho she's a um, she's a radio talk host she also tries to help you know uh, to to find Gil where he is you know and um, Gil is actually in the stadium he's in the game somewhere and um, when, when the game keeps continue uh, during the, the during the raining and uh, you know you only have like three strikes and, and Bobby misses two strikes and he sees clearly in the third the, the, the third ball, you know, when the pitcher throws the ball, Bobby, he, he, he actually hits the goddamn ball, you know. He, he scores and he runs like a pure badass he is. He runs, you know, through the whole field. He runs and he makes a home run. But then the upper says, you're out. I mean, I was like, what? He made a home run, you damn fuck. He made a home run. And the guy keeps saying, you're out, you're out, you're out, you know. And then we see it's Gil in the upper uniform. And Bobby says, you stole my kid. He goes, punches the guy, 
you know, it, it kill, he grabs a knife, you know, stabs another, um, he stabs uh, Bobby, you know, but he doesn't sta stab him clearly, he goes and kills one of the players, you know, with a knife, um, but then he's surrounded by the police, and um, he's surrounded by the police, and, uh, and Bobby wants to find his son, and Gil doesn't tell him, but he tells him, you know, uh, exact location at his son's stadium, and, you know, then he tries to throw the knife, and the cops kills him, shoots him, and kills him, and by the end, you know, they actually found, uh, um, on that stadium that he said they found, his kid, you know, and Bobby is reunited with his kid, which is such a beautiful, happy moment, you know. Um, but yeah, the fan, I like the fan, I really like the film, the, the film, um, I like the fan, directed by Tony Scott, and was written by P.O. for Saturn, but was directed by, um, Tony Scott, um, Tony Scott declined twice this film, but then when he heard that Robert De Niro is gonna be cast, he, uh, accepted the, the role, he, um, he, Tony Scott, he rejected um, he declined to direct The Rock, but he, in, in, in order to do this movie, um, so yeah, he, he's supposed to direct The Rock, but he rather direct this movie, so Michael Bay later directed The Rock, um, Tony Scott, rest in peace, I love the guy, my favorite movie, you know, uh, when I did Beverly Hills Cup 2 last year, I actually said that's my favorite Tony Scott film, actually my favorite will be The Last Boy Scout, that's my favorite, then, uh, the, then Beverly Hills Cap 2, then he did Top Gun, um, he did with that movie he did with Will Smith, um, he also, I didn't care uh, much about Domino, I thought that movie was bored, fast of a film, but I like the fan, um, my issue with the film is that it's way too long, it's almost 2 hours long, 1 hour 56 minutes, that's way too long, um, it's just, uh, it's, I kind of fall asleep uh, during the film, um, uh, the pacing is slow, uh, but by the finale it gets fast paced, which the finale is the best of the film, but the, the pacing is kind of slow in my opinion, um, it, it couldn't have to be two hours long, it could be, so it could go fast paced around, but the, the, pace, the pacing for me is a slow burn, you know, it's kind, I kind of got through the movie, uh, I kind of got bored. Um, but the finale, it gets exciting, you know, um, Tony Scott did a good, good, uh, direction, he did great director this movie, um, I really like the fan a lot, Robert De Niro is the best of the film as a performance, Gil Renard, Wes is nice wanted to play Gil Renard, but, well, Robert De Niro was cast, um, Brad Pitt wanted to, to play the character, but he wasn't cast, so he declined later, they wanted to cast Al Pacino, but I'm glad they cast Robert De Niro. Um, Robert De Niro uh, played a psych psychopath in uh, um, in Cape Fear, in Cape Fear later. Um, actually, uh, in earlier he played Cape Fear, and I liked Cape Fear. In that movie, he was very scary monster. But I actually thought that in this movie he worked wa much better than in that movie, and I thought Robert De Niro performance with Wes Snipes was the best of the film. And, um, but Robert De Niro, he nailed the role as Gil Renard. And, yeah, the fan, you know, it, it can happen in real life. Um, it did happen to, uh, when this psychopath was talking and he was obsessed with, uh, with the actress Rebecca Schaefer, and, in which, uh, which uh, she upset him in the, in the end, you know, he went and, and shot her. He killed her, that psychopath. I think it was Robert Bardo that that uh, that moron he did that and yeah it can happen in real life um, so yeah it kind of is realistic and uh, and I thought that Robert De Niro did a fantastic job as uh, as Gil Renard obsessive fan who becomes the wrenched uh, the wrenched uh, psychopath in the movie and Robert De Niro nailed the performance in my opinion. Um, but uh, Best is Time still is still a good, you know. It's not my favorite of movies, but this is the second time Best is Time plays a be basket a baseball player. Um, he played um, he uh, he played in the major league way, but he wasn't the poster in that movie. He's supposed to be in the poster uh, when he played Willie Mays Hayes, but he wasn't. Um, he also played. I think this uh, this was. One of the four movies that Wesley Snipes did that were that concerned about being sports. 
The first one was Wildcats. Uh, I think uh, Woody Harrison was in that movie. Um, then he did uh, Wild, uh, uh, White Man Can Jump. Uh, then he did this movie, and I think he did another movie um, that, that he that was about. Uh, um, he did. I think he did. Um, I think he did four movies. I'm not sure, but yeah, he uh, he did. You know, um, uh, wait, he Wildcats, White Man Can White Man Can Jump, The Fan, and I think was another major league where yeah, he did four four movies. You know, this was actually um, the fourth movie uh, that that that, going, that was about sports that Wesley Snipes did, but he did good as uh, Bobby Reno, uh, <laughs> Reynolds. Um, Bobby Rainburn, he did a good job as Bobby Rainburn, um, baseball player that signed a contract for the million dollars for San Francisco Giants. But Robert De Niro was fantastic. He's a he was phenomenal. I have to give a credits to Robert De Niro. He was awesome. Um, probably he's the best of the film. Um, he played the psy psychopath um, from Cape Fear, from Cape Fear. He also played a psychopath in this movie, so that was awesome. The movie cost $55 million, it was a box office flop, uh, it earned only $18 million, I don't know why it was uh, why, why this movie cost that much money to make it, but it was, but it was a box office flop, it was, um, it, uh, it actually, um, um, it actually, um, it actually received generally negative reviews. Which I don't know why, but this was flopped. It, it uh, on IMDb holds 5.9 uh, um, the score. Um, that's kind of low. I think this movie is kind of underrated, but I like it. It's a good movie. It's a good psychological thriller. Um, the my only issue is is that is the 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 running time. It didn't have to be two hours long, and it kind of slow burn at the first. But, but the finale, it gets interesting. Um, so yeah, it's a really good movie. I enjoyed it. Um, now the cast, beside Robert De Niro and Wesley Snipes, they also have... Um, we also do have Ellen Barkin um, as, uh, as Radio Talk host, Jules Stern. She did a good job helping Bobby. She was on the Bobby side. I like that. John Leguiaz Mosh, he was also... As Manny, the manager of Bobby, um, later uh, 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 John Ligasmo and um, Wesley Snipes are playing in Two Wong Fu, thanks to everything, jo Julie Newmar. They also play together, this is the second collaboration. Um, and Benicio del Toro, del Toro as Juan, Juan Primo did a good job, you know, as rival uh, in uh, Bobby's team. Um, the other actors, you know, were, were also Brandon Hammond, he plays Sean Rayburn, son of Bobby Rainborn, and, um, and of course, um, Richie Renard, uh, Andrew J. Ferchland played Richie Renard, um, uh, Gil's son, which he was awesome, um, and, El and of course, Patty, the band, Ville, the, the, the other band, Ville Green, she played, Ellen Renard, she did a good job. Um, there's also the scene when um, Ellen makes a restricted, uh, uh, she makes, um, she files a uh, um, uh, restrict order, you know, against Gil. So Gil, you know, he goes on, a, on his son baseball game and he tried to, te to teach his son how to pitch correctly, you know, how to hit the ball. And you know, team tries to involve in, and there's a scene when almost you know, um, when um, when when Gil gets upstairs, grabs a baseball bat, and when team tries to interfere, he almost beats the guy with, with the baseball bat. You know, that's kind of scary. Um, but yeah, um, the, there's uh, there's also for the '80s the fan with uh, Michael Bean. I have not seen it, um, but I only saw. I only just checked the IMDb, but this movie is a really good one. Um, there was also number one fan, uh, I think was direct to video from 1995 with Chad McQueen. He played this uh, uh, the, this action star and he had an affair with this girl 
and uh, he has a girl, he has a fiance, and it turns out that this girl is a, uh, is actually a, uh, this girl is a psychopath, and she she has tried to ruin his life just like um, Gil does, you know. But in my opinion, the fan is much better than in my opinion number one fan because. Um, Bobby still fights off, you know, he gets stabbed by the end. And I thought that Tony Scott did a great, great direction. I enjoyed the music score, uh, music score by Hans Zimmer, just like Broken Arrow. And this one, I really enjoy music score. I love the song on the, on the end by Hans Zimmer, Letting Go. Um, I also love the song um, Nine Inch uh, Nails Closer. And also, Macy Gain, uh, Gainey, he was, he was the Swamp Thing in Conair. Was also one of the fans in the row behind, sitting behind um, um, Gil with his son, uh, with uh, with his son um, Tim, and uh, they were like, uh, and uh, when uh, Gil, you know, stands up, you know, MC again, he starts yelling at him, you know, why don't you sit down? Why don't you sit down? You know, he was also he was also the actor. And funny was that as a Tuesday night for on a Nightmare on Street 4, the the Dream Master when she played Kristen Parker, um, when she played uh, Kristen Parker, she was also in this film. But I did not notice her. Maybe she got older. Um, I did not notice it Tuesday night in this film. Um, but yeah, the cast in my opinion works well. But Wes Snipes and Robert De Niro are the best. If they won't be in this movie, I don't think. That this movie would be so successful, but Sally it bombed. Uh, it uh, it was a bomb uh, box office flop, which I shouldn't be. It received generally negative reviews. Um, but uh, yeah, it uh, <clears throat> um, but it was in the novel by Peter Abrams with the same name, which came out nine nine five. The fan and actually the fan Bobby Rayborn he was white in this movie he was black so they kind of changed that. Um, but Gil Renard you know uh, uh, he he's a huge fan and uh, you know he's a huge fan and he wants you know um, and he wants that Bobby makes him a home run which I thought that was awesome. Um, but the finale in my opinion did a great job. Um, but I think that in uh, uh, the the Gil kills five people in this movie. Um, <clears throat> I think he kills Upper when he takes his uh, his uh, clothes, his uniform uh, in the in, on the field. So I think he kills five people. One of the he also stabs one of the baseball players when he tried to interfere. He stabs him. You know um, he also kills Primo and he kills. Um, he goes and kills this guy, um, Coop, his his, uh, his his friend when they were together in the baseball league way, in the minor league way. Um, I think he kills. He goes and kills like five people. I think so. Um, but uh, but yeah, he. But I thought that Robert De Niro, you know, worked well. Um, he did a good job. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought I thought um, I thought that he did well. I thought that also Ellen Barkin as uh, Jules, you know, as um, as Jules Stern, you know, did a good job. And I love when Gil defends Bobby. You know, Gil goes and defends Bobby. He kills Primo. Um, he he goes, you know, and um, he kills like four, five people, I think, in the movie. Um, and I thought that that was really. Uh, I thought that by the end, you know, the fan did work well for me. Um, I enjoyed it. I still can show you. So, yeah, that's actually my review. I show you again. That's my review of the fan. Um, but thanks for watching and thanks for listening. And I'll see you soon for the next review. So, take care. I'm out. Bye.